and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 288. I am your host, Norman Sanso. Joining me today is Amy. Hello, everyone. Hello, Amy. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. So, for people at home who may or may not know you, you were one of the people who recorded previously when I was live in, <laughs> well, technically not really live, but it was then in a hotel room, it was late, and everybody was tired. But still, you were one of the people there, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, I, I don't think I asked you the four important questions when we were doing that show. I think because everybody was tired and stuff. Yes. But so, um, before we officially start, I need to ask you the four important questions. And question one is, who's your favorite character? Oh, Twilight Sparkle. Oh, any reason why? It's relatable. I mean, I, if people ask me my attitude or why am I, I say it's Twilight Sparkle to almost every detail. I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> All right. Yeah, she is for me. She's the most relatable. All right, cool, cool. Uh, what about your favorite episode? My favorite episode. Oh, I didn't see this coming. We've got so many to think right now. <laughs> I, I did warn you about it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. Actually, I think I think I like Castlevania because it was so hilarious. Really now? Yeah, because it's like one of the episodes like seems they didn't start it together and they misunderstood and just like a bit like slapstick comedy. Is there? I'm just surprised because uh, Castle Mania is one of those episodes that uh, people either hate or like. And most of the people I talked to really didn't like Castle Mania. And hearing from you that you like it, it's surprising. So well, that's good. Yeah, I mean, someone, you know, Twilight, she always likes something slightly different than the rest. Yep, yep. And also, uh, that episode there starts off uh, the legend of the Ponies of Shadow. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> that, that took a while to pay off. But uh, let's see. Third question is, how did you become a fan of the show? Four years ago. I think at that time it was already season two at least. Or at least they were waiting season three to start. I joined this company, this animation company, where I met a bunch of boys who liked My Little Pony. And at that time, I, okay, I'm a fan of My Little Pony since Generation 1 because I'm a girl, you know, it was okay. my childhood stuff. But then mm-hmm. when, when during Generation 3, I give up on them completely for many reasons. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. so after, when the 4 came out, I was, I mean, I already, like, they already died to me at that time. Then the boys were convincing me, please give a shot. And, <laughs> and, and I wasn't really have anything to watch. I said, oh, sure, sure, I give a watch. Then, oh. And they're the one that in the end give up the fandom, leaving me alone. Hi yo. What? Why? Uh, I'm not sure. I think. And uh, nah, I better don't talk. They have some personal stuff there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, so, what do your family and friends think about your love for this show? Mm, <coughs> I don't think they're there to judge me because I'm gonna take them back. <laughs> <laughs> no lah. I think. I think they. I think they didn't put much thought on me because I'm a girl. I guess. Alright. And good, so they, th- they think it's maybe just pretty normal. I guess. True, true. Girl liking ponies, that's normal. Yeah. I mean, yeah, true. Uh, so, thank you for answering the four basic questions. And well, before I hit in, so, to me, you're well known as the person who cosplays as Twilight wherever there's a convention or a meetup. So, I, I think you and another person, if I'm not mistaken, Ning. I forgot her name, full name, Ning. But I know that she's also one of the uh, quote unquote Twilight cosplayers around, mm-hmm. and it's uh, it seems that I get to talk to you more than her. So yeah, so the cosplaying, uh, have you been doing that for a while now, or is just that something you do well on and off? Actually, I kind of I used to be quite active when I was sixteen, which is around twelve years ago. So oh. <laughs> so now a bit on on and off. But I don't mind doing Twilight. How hard is it? Like getting the wig, the outfits and whatnot, and every prop? The wig was actually surprisingly easy. It's, the trick is you actually don't find... You, you know, remember the anime series Panty and Stocking? Uh-huh, yeah. You, the wig is actually stocking wig. But <laughs> it works perfectly. And if you're too long, just cut it to get the length you wanted. And for the outfit, yeah, that's the tricky part that the skirt actually I assume myself. <coughs> A lot of customization then, alright. Oh yeah, but the skirt is from scratch, I did it. Alright, cool, cool. Yeah. Well, well, if it gets hard, I, I think you can use the new ponies, uh, or the new Equestria girls from the new, the recent short that appeared. I mean, look at how <laughs> Twilight is, look at how Sunset or the other girls, I mean, 
uh, they look kind of normal. And talking about that, um, it seems that uh, Discovery Family Go has four new shorts there. Yeah. Um, it's available to watch here in Malaysia, and I'm sure that it works in other countries too. So the past few shorts that you weren't able to see is available now. Go go watch. It's a really fun thing. All right. And it's one of those things where request your girls. Yay, more more info. <laughs> Have you seen it? Not yet. Really? No, 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 four. Not yet, not yet. I uh, like I said, I was a bit busy this oh, week to go through. Yeah, I, you know, I, I you know we started a bit late in the sense. I mean, those of you might not know the listeners, but actually we start quite late because I just came back for another event. Immediately rush for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yes. yes, that's true. Uh, it's okay. Everybody's, everybody forgives you. But still, uh, you should because I'm not sure if this is part of the 45 uh, episode short that they were talking about previously, but it's here. It's kind of, well, it's free. It's there. Yeah, and, Just it's only, watch. and it's only three minutes. Two to three minutes, depending. And I'm double checking here and, oh, yes. Uh, they split everything to two parts where there's better together and summertime shorts. But I'm not getting anything here. This is really confusing on my end. <laughs> it's okay. Oh yeah, there we go. So yeah, summertime shorts are a whole set of series where there's a song, there's, you know what, there's the what one. There, there's a few short there where Celestia wants to teach but couldn't because principal duty and then here's the episode where Sunset got her pet gecko, Rex, and so on. Yeah, go go watch it there. It's fun, it's free, it's available. Yay. Yeah. And talking about weird things online. <laughs> <laughs> I know where we're uh, going. Yep. So anywho, um, Halloween was uh, last weekend. <laughs> and I'm sure there's a lot of crazy things that happened during Halloween. Like the insert sexy costume here kind of trope. It's... It's everywhere, it's everywhere. It seems that uh, it's not limited to humans. Yes. <laughs> I mean, we, we heard a lot of animals doing Halloween costume, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people did not expect this one. Oh, well, yeah, true that. And, well, um, the big horse jump event, Washington International, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know the official name, but it's one of those equestrian uh, horse jumping games that, they're there. I'm not 100 sure what this is, but uh, you you have your. But what is it's the it's the Washington International Horse Show? Am I correct? I think so. I'm not yeah, a it, huge. I, it, yeah, it's the it's the Washington International Horse Show, and basically they were usually uh they do dressage, but this one is they doing the endurance uh endurance oh. run because I'm um, I actually like. A question, so yeah. <laughs> so you keep up to all right. That's oh, good. That's yes, good. I did, but not as active as I used to be. But I'm still there. All righty then. And well, <laughs> it seems that uh, you'll have uh, like let's see, you, you have your McDonald's mascot. Why is the Hamburg riding around? No, oh god. <laughs> you oh, you're checking them now. Yes, uh, you also got Toy Story, you also yeah. got Dorothy and Toto and stuff. You got. I mean, the... they even bring the dog together. Uh, yeah, I know, and, that, and, that's something. And there's the girl down there, seriously, with the plate jacket, with the plate shirt and the sunflower. And I I don't lie, my first impression, like, is that Applejack? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, no, it's a scarecrow, yeah, but it's... still. And then there's a shark thing and whatnot. And then suddenly Minnie Mouse. you see... They even have Minnie Mouse. <laughs> and then you see Spider-Man... There you see Rainbow Dash. What? No, no, not only that. Rainbow Dash riding Pinkie Pie. I get it sounds so wrong here. I know, I know. <laughs> but still, yay! That, that exists. Yeah, come on. Yeah. They they must show that don't make fun of us. Oh yeah, but still, uh, I, he, this competitor didn't win. The winner was yeah. I'm not if I'm not mistaken was the, the Dracula. Dracula. Yes. Uh, maybe better. I I don't know. I I'm not I'm I, a judge. I, I got feeling he won because you the thing if you look at one glance on the horse they put like some sort of chalk they shape like Batman. Maybe that's why he won. <laughs> <laughs> probably probably. But still, it's one of those fun events that uh, for fun. At least Pony yeah. got highlighted in the media once again. And you know what? I I think next time uh ponies could be a ride at some convention. <laughs> and talking about conventions, Hascon. Hascon is Hasbro's official convention. 
everything related to the Hasbro brand from Magic the Gathering to Nerf to My Little Pony and so on. Even Transformers. Yes, I'm missing that one out. Yes. They do have the, some sort of mini one in Malaysia recently also, right? Uh, they, I... they did an Evo more that day, right? Uh, some sort. I don't know. Okay, I... maybe they, maybe it's not exactly a convention, lah, but i just let you know. Around Roughly around this time, because September, I remember, they're doing the... Uh, some sort of like Hasbro event. Everything Hasbro selling at Evo Mall, and I, cause I live nearby there, so yeah. They I ha- don't know about that one. Oh yeah, they have a lot of My Little Pony stuff at good prices and some exclusive stuff that day. Oh huh, okay, uh, that's good to know. But now I, I don't think that it was it. Mm-hmm. But anywho, um, for Hascon, um, it's Hasbro's official convention. It happened this year, and this year was kind of okay. The turnout was excellent. People. Uh, went there. A lot of um, the people I follow who are into the Magic the Gatherings went there. Uh, they got to see a lot of stuff and so on. And for the pony side, there's a lot of announcements from season 8 to the whole um, movie talk and promotional items and swags and whatnot. So this convention seems to be working for them and it seems that they're not doing next year and they're coming back in... 2019, mm-hmm. uh, that's around September 6th to September 8th. So, yay, much awesomeness. I think that's a four-day con, is it? Yeah, and then do you think this, okay, I mean, because the, this year event, they do have a lot of meet up with some celebrities, but none of them actually, I mean, from the My Little Pony people, like the voice actor, do you think they would do that in 2019, considering the movies are out? Nah, they're not gonna call the movie people back, but they are going to call uh, the regular show people like Ashley Ball, Andrew Lipman, uh, probably Tara I, I, Strong. I, I, I mean, yeah, some, I, I, actually, I was referring to them. I mean, right, maybe because the movie out, finally they're calling the voice actress to oh, come no. out. No, no, they they will always come. I mean, as long as they're getting paid. And, you know, <laughs> the, <laughs> That's true. The, <laughs> the main point about the pony fandom is it's not about meeting Tay Dig. It's not about meeting... Uh, Emily Blunt or Sabretooth and so on. It's about getting to meet Ashley Ball, Andrea Lipman, Tabitha Sintramain, Kathy Westlock and Tara Strong. It's about meeting them and hearing the voices of the ponies. And yes, they are the key attraction. Tay Diggs is just a nice addition, but he's not going to be on the show most of the time. He's got his paycheck. He's out. So if this one... Who knows? I mean, 2019 is a long way. There's a one-year planning, and I do hope that the MBS show gets invited somehow. I'm just saying, has bro, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. So, yeah, um, it's one of those cons that if I were to go there, it would be so awesome. And if you have the cash, would you go? I would, I would, I would. All right, you know, yay. Yeah. Ah, much fun. I, I, I do wish I could go. I do wish I could go. Don't worry, you're not the only one. True that, true that. <laughs> and talking about um, season 8 and stuff, it seems that we will be getting Josh Heber and Nicole DeBunk, co-story editors for season 8. And for you people who got no idea who Josh Heber is, he's one of the old writers who came back. Uh, I think he wrote Castlemania, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he, he actually he's writing the first draft. The first draft, so I, I'm not sure if he finalized the whole thing, actually. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, season 8 stuff is still the way. Like, I got no idea. But from what I understand, Josh Haber is no stranger to the show. He's been on the pony wagon for a while now. And if I'm not mistaken, he did do uh, Castlemania. Let me double check because... Yeah, he did, he did the first draft. Yep, yeah, yeah. He did Castlemania and he also did a few other sh- episodes... Anywho, yes, uh, he's coming back, so yay, we get more of his great awesomeness. You said that Casamina was your favorite, so <laughs> yay, you'll get more of him then. Yeah, I mean, I mean, in my opinion, right, because I, uh, when you're writing a story, like, there are a lot of hit and miss, because maybe sometimes they're maybe focusing certain issue way too much, or maybe they didn't think carefully. I, I mean, maybe because I feel like the reason I like Castlemania is one of the episodes where I consider very lighthearted. Maybe we need some chills after so much thing happen. I mean, that's how I feel uh, about Castlemania. Yeah, true. I mean, there's a lot of thing. He did do most of 
season seven, and he did a few episodes in season seven. Uh, like it's the it's the main thing about you, and that episode was great. Uh, for you guys at home who may not remember that episode, that's the one where we got punk rock rarity. Yeah. So yeah, you you got that. You got Uncommon Bond and so on. Uh, and he also did Shadow Play one and two. So him coming back and him writing for the show in that capacity, I can't wait to see what he does. Yeah, yes. and then maybe it's a good idea also in a sense. Okay, if like I say how I feel about Castlevania, right? I mean, I mean season six or maybe season seven. There are a few things can be quite heavy episode, but we don't need to go there too much. What? So I think maybe it's about time we go something a bit lighthearted. I think uh, maybe I it's think, about time. Yeah. Well, personally, I think we need the balance between uh, in-depth storytelling and lighthearted humor. Yeah. And we need that balance there because if we have if we lean onto one thing than the other, then the fandom will complain mm-hmm. and it will lose its audience. And the main thing is that a lot of people do enjoy the more serious tone in the show and it brings up a lot of this good discussion. Yeah, I agree with that because like, uh, I mean like one of the episodes I, I mentioned to you, episode 21, Mars and Recreation, or oh, I have with one friend, we have a lot of interesting discussion going on. I mean, it's a, like you say, a good episode is the one that you can open a lot of discussion. Oh, true And, that, and true it just relates to in real life as well that we can start to rethink how should we do. I mean... Our, our current society, everything. Why not, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true. Uh, but still, um, that's further away in the future. We got no no idea when season is coming out, but it's going to be fun. But um, on to the last and next news. This is a bit of a woozy because this one just well, quote unquote, came out. And well, you remember Paramount, right? They're the people who have that um logo of a mountain with stars at the side and so on. They're the people that did the Transformers movie. Remember them? The Transformers <laughs> movie, the Michael Bay one. Isn't it they also the one that originally did some of the TV series or the movie for My Little Pony? I mean, the Generation 1 at least. They're the one, right? Probably. The, the TV. Yeah, I kind of forgot, but I think it was them as well. Probably. I'm uh, kind of checking the wiki page on what they did. Mm-hmm. But still, uh, they have been around for a long time now and it's no surprise that they're, well, kind of in the works with Hasbro to distribute their films. Because if you do remember that mm-hmm. uh, the first My Little Pony movie was distributed by Lionsgate. Oh, my bad. Lion- yeah, Lionsgate, for you guys who don't know, did hits and misses. Like, well, I do remember the hits. I don't really remember the misses. Like, I do remember... Pacific Rim. That was a really great show. <laughs> uh, and since part two is coming out, you should really go watch it. And, uh, you know what? I don't remember the misses because if it missed, I don't really remember. But still, uh, they do a lot of shows. And with Paramount here, it seems that they have a five year deal to work together. Uh, it seems that starting from, I got no idea when, uh, Paramount will be distributing, oh, sorry, publishing their works to international waters well i, I mean I, i'm actually quite curious and slightly look forward since they do some <laughs> distribute some animation but all they did so far from what i know are 3ds like you know like how to train your dragon mm, yeah I mean, that like was kung fu panda they? yeah they're part of it they also do for kung fu panda so i guess they are quite familiar at uh, shrek they even do for shrek so they are quite familiar with animation but you but so far they've been doing 3d so it does give me wonder are they trying to make my pony into 3d in the future um, that is not on them i mean they could have a say in it somehow but in all honesty it's all on all spark studios like if all spark studio wants to um change to a 3D thing, it's all on them, not Paramount. Paramount is just the people that mm-hmm. distributes the yeah, film yeah, yeah, yeah. to an international audience. Like, how did they do the Transformers and stuff? I mean, I'm looking at their webpage right now, Paramount Pictures, and they did shows like Daddy's Home 2, Ghost in the Shell, the live action one, the mm-hmm. Baywatch with Dwayne Johnson, the Transformers movie. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, we talked about this last night. Oy. And 
many more. I mean, there's a lot here. Well, no, there's not a lot, but uh, it's one of those things where it's there, it's there. So, anyway, uh, what what can I say? They have a history of distributing films, like even bombs, like uh, uh, Ice Age Three. Nobody really goes watch that one. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Or Shrek the Third, but still. They did good money and stuff. Well, I mean, well, despite Shrek 3 is something like quite bad, but it's still number 5 for their highest grossing, at least not America, not worldwide. Worldwide also is their number 5, actually, for their, their yeah, work. True. Yeah, but at least we do know they at least have Titanic with them, right? Uh, I think so. I mean, it's still there, but the fact of the matter is that Paramount helping distribute the film to a more wider audience will probably get better results in the future. Uh, recently, the My Little Pony movie made 30 mil. So, that's nothing to scoff about. So, that's all good. Yeah, 30 that's... mil or... Tr- yeah, 30 mil. They got 30 mil. And with the help of Paramount, maybe they'll get more. Who knows, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and I can't wait to see. Right? And I, I'm also curious, if I read correctly some of the news, right? They, I mean, they have sent this five-year deal, film deal, right? Mm-hmm. And they actually did mention, it could be rumours, it could be true, but they mentioned they might want to do live action. Actually, that one is really caught my attention. Live action. Mm-hmm. How did it What are they actually planning in that sense? They're not talking about Pony specifically for this one because live you, action... You mean like Equestria Girls at least? Uh, no, no. <laughs> I will be horrified actually. <laughs> now, see, the thing about ponies that works for... Mm-hmm them is that it works best in 2D. I mean, take mm-hmm. a look, see at the source filmmakers out there, the fans that do a lot of work with the 3D ponies. Mm-hmm. Some of them work, some of them don't. I, I mean, it, we don't even need to do the fan. I, I, maybe I don't need to name a few TV series. There used to be some sort of TV series or wet cartoons. They started as 2D. Then when they shift to 3D, I can tell you it's horrible. That's why I, I start, stopped following some of them actually. Yeah, true that too. I mean, but it, it also goes back to the idea of how shows go. I mean, if Hasbro wants to put the ponies in 3D, it's all on them to decide because what's going on right now is working for them. And if they suddenly shift to 3D, then I can guarantee that they'll see a drop in audience because the jarringness of how weird the pony looks, even with the movie. It's 2D, but a lot of people said that, hey, uh, the pony don't look good. Even Julie the Dragon said that the pony looks chubby. And one, in a sense, while it could, we can take it in two ways. One, it could be true what they say. And second, sometimes it's all a matter about familiarity. I mean, we are so used to certain the style. I mean, remember we went to watch that day. Uh, it took me quite some time to finally get used. Okay, this is how they look like in the, in oh, the film. True. True that. That is also true with the familiarity. But mm-hmm. the thing is, you have to think about in the sense of a business mindset where I have a brand, this thing is work, sorry, this thing is working, and I suddenly want to change it into 3D. So you'll have that situation where if it's broke, you shouldn't fix it. But right now, it's like I'm trying to innovate on something. Yet, I may be breaking the thing that everybody enjoys. Yeah, it's something like, it's a very old story, but it cannot help to remind me. Remember last time, uh, in the early days when they released the toys, they released Celestia in pink color. Even Lauren Faust was complaining, like, why, why you try to do this? Because it's like, say, the marketing people think, oh, they like pink color, we should go there. See, that's, that's the problem there, okay. Exactly. Way back when, before the bronies took over, <laughs> quote unquote took over. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Girls' toys are always pink. Boys' toys is always blue. Girls don't like to play with action figures. Boys don't like to play with dolls. But now with how things are, look at some of the pony toys that are out now. Yeah. Look at how their um, joints are. Like how... Um, what's the word I'm looking more, for? More, more accurate to the TV series. Uh, not accurate, but more flexible. Like their joints are moving uh, as one. Yeah, I, I, I mean, exactly. That's that's my point. I mean, they should at this point they already understand how powerful. <laughs> no, can I say how powerful the brownies are? Nah, not really. Okay, uh, I just really? remember the word. It's articulation. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. So I guess like 
we like you say you shouldn't fix something it's not broken in terms of uh, media but for toys okay I, I'm getting back on track with what I was saying before is that with Pink uh, Celestia marketing says girls like pink we need to have a pink pony and that's why uh, quote unquote cadence was made just because they could sell pink pony toys <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, luck, luck, luckily I like that character luckily she's a likeable character <laughs> Yes, now, but still, um, that's besides the point. But getting back on track with what we we're saying, uh, we shouldn't. Well, they shouldn't try and change something that's working. I mean, the show is in two D for a reason, uh, and putting them in live action, it's going to be. Yeah, uh, I actually I don't want to think about it. <laughs> remember Smurfs? Smurf was a thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, maybe there are, oh yeah, there are true. Maybe there are certain things can be hit and miss. I mean, like Ninja Turtle was in 2D animation, but surprisingly, you said to me, I mean, people been telling me the live action is actually pretty good, but there's a reason because at least they have interaction with human characters. But, but mm. I can, but My Little Pony World, there's no human. So, yeah, I'm not, well, I cannot the, see how it the works. Thing, the thing about the turtles, uh, was that there's a gap in between. I think there's a almost 10 year gap or 7 year gap. Ah, because, yeah, 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 I understand. Uh, the last total to pure one TV was TMNT, the 2010 version, if I remember right. The really dark grim one before they they turn into futuristic stuff like, oh, that was terrible. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, Nickelodeon kind of rebooted into, uh, the 2012 version where everything is 3D and, it didn't look weird. Like, you have that gap there. Mm-hmm. So that plays part to your, okay, this is a retelling of the story. So that is something good. But with Pony, suddenly you, okay, another good example is the movie, the Michael Bay produced to Ninja Turtles movie. You have mm-hmm. that one, while you have the 3D animated one running. And the Turtles for that one, they don't look good. <laughs> so you can just imagine how things are when it comes to how turning something animated into live action. And yeah, I'm not going to say anything more because we got no idea, but I do hope that we don't get any live action ponies or equestria girls. No, please, no. Yeah, I, just, I cannot imagine to be honest, and I don't want to. to be. Well, that's the news for this week. So... Let's head on to the next topic. And the next topic is, what have we been doing with our week? So, Amy, you're new here, so why don't you go first? What have you been doing? Well, basically, today I just I just said earlier that I was somewhere else earlier. So, today I'm attending a doll meetup. Before you guys think, it's not your typical doll. It's a BJD, the ball jointed dolls. How do I say? It's something like we also have a smart door. If you're familiar with any two smart door, then you know which, what kind of doll event I'm talking about. Today we are having a meetup. We do a lot of photo shoot, get to know all the enthusiast, uh, the enthusiastic people who are into this hobby. And they have some vendor selling. Because like all these doll, you can customize the hair, the eyes. In other words, yes, I'm part of the My Little Pony community and this doll community. So, <laughs> Alright. So, so if you guys at home got no idea what BJD <laughs> is, uh, is what Dusty Cat has. Remember with his doll, it's something similar to that. <laughs> so, uh, how long have you been playing with those dolls? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> true, but this song, it became so long. I, now, actually, no, now you said it, damn. I actually just started this year. It's, I think I started around August, but I be wanted to do this since two years ago. Almost the same time I started with my cosplay. It's like either the doll or cosplay. And my budget say cosplay first. So why now? Like, is it because of the new tech or whatnot? Uh, actually, just a perfect timing. I mean, I getting a good salary and somebody selling secondhand super cheap. That's all. Ah, uh, yeah. So it starts with the secondhand and then you get to buy the new one. Then you buy the accessories, the play size and toys and so on. And then you get a huge collection and then you get obsessed. Ah, uh, I'm... I have two so far. Yes, it's quite fast for somebody just started. And maybe I'll stick there. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, trust me. You'll see one and then you'll go buy it. Ah, uh, okay. Before these two main doors, yeah, I have few expensive ones. So, yeah, I have five actually. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, it's a long story. <laughs> alright, alright. So, 
uh, this reminds me of another friend of mine, um, Zen. He was yes. on the show way back when. This was during the show where, you know what? Okay. The show has been on for a long time now. And Zen was around when we were at the double digits. So you can just imagine how long that was. Yeah. And, um, meeting him in Thailand, he showed that he had a few. I, I think he had a model that looks like Applejack mm-hmm. and another one that looks like Gilda. And oh wow, that was just too awesome to look like. I'm a huge fan of Gilda and looking at that like, oh wow. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. Then to me, I think if he, if after can, he said to me he got five. Yeah, normal. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you should hear my friend, she got 35. Uh, no <laughs> if you know each of the prizes, yes, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, like, for the dolls specifically, there are a lot of, there, there's a lot of maintenance going on. Like, the joints, you need to make sure they're movable and stuff, and also the skin. The skin, if I'm not mistaken, latex, was it? No, no. Uh, there are two types. Mine is resin. That is the more expensive one. And the other one is vinyl. Vinyl, yes. But uh, still, you need to keep them clean and whatnot and uh, stuff. Actually, okay, because coincidentally, because I just came back from the event where I talked more the difference between having a resin and the vinyl type. I mean, the, between the smart door and the mm-hmm. other type of dolls. Like my door, there are strings. Mm-hmm. They are pulled by the strings. So actually, you have to keep the strings to not to lose. Otherwise, yes, then the, the articulation will be bad. And for the makeup, is the one you have to take care of a lot. But the vinyl, the other type, is easier because it's not by string. It's the like, it's like from the, it's like, like the Barbie doll type of articulation. But because it's vinyl, yeah, the, the maintenance, it was a bit headache come to outfit because some of the outfit can stain the skin. Yeah, so that's problem there. But still, uh, from what I heard, it's all those problems because I had a, I have a friend who is in 2D dolls but he doesn't own one mm-hmm. just because that he doesn't have time to take care of them and stuff. Actually, that's true. Also, because the problem with them that you actually, do, uh, some of the new timers started, they make a mistake by uh, displaying them outside. They say, because the thing, you cannot get them direct sunlight but they don't understand the room light is a UV so if you didn't cover them as time goes by, they be, the skin become yellow. Mm-hmm. And, and, that's, uh, and that's a headache. Yeah, and that's a headache also. Yeah, like, they, now now you have that what meet up so you can teach them and stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so well, other, other than true, true. So other than that, what else did you do today? Nothing, because we actually spent almost the whole morning until almost night. We doing the meet up. Oh for, wow. Yeah, so that's that's why I came back a bit late. Oh okay. I, I saw a picture. Um, one from you and one from my friend we talked about yesterday. Yeah. And, I, I, and from what he told me, you, you met up with him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, because he, he, did you know he's the organizer? His wife, Ellie. Really? His wife is the organizer, the, the one organized to the event. And obviously really? he, and, no. yeah, obvi- and obviously he's the helper. Lah. <laughs> so what did you, okay, uh, how did that scenario go? I'm a bit curious now. Uh, you mean today? Yes, like the whole uh, meeting up with Rin and stuff. Like, I, I want to know. I think the previously I met the wife. Um, okay, the reason why I remember the wife, uh, there's a funny story happened. When I uh-huh. first time met her, it was pre- last September. Because uh, there's a doll meetup event where people selling everything secondhand and it was super cheap. So I got this one beautiful dress for my doll. But when uh-huh. I put her, because we, we, when we bought it, we really Try it out there. So after mm-hmm. I pay, I try. I was like, "Oh my god, the dress is nice, but apparently it's the it's quite tight for my doll body." Mm-hmm. And I feel like oh, I don't want to ruin the dress. And after a while, chit chat, chit chat with all these people, then I met the wife, and as we talked, she said, "Oh, actually, I wanted the dress, but <laughs> but I have no money. But why can't make somebody bought it?" I said, "Yeah, it's me. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's obviously that." I said, "I came close to her and said, mm, hey, you know what? Do you want it?'" <laughs> I said, I can sell to you. And she said, but, but you already got it. I mean, look nice on you, though. I like it. It's too tight. And she like, <laughs> look at each other. She said, okay, I'll buy for you. But that's an extra story also why we become closer. Because she said, but I have not enough money. I said, just take the dress back in to me later. <laughs> it works. Yeah, it works. And then, and then after we talked last night, so earlier when I arrived, mm-hmm. first time I saw the husband, I said, wait, mm-hmm. wait. Okay, I'm not making any story, but when I look at the husband and up to now, I try to figure, I swear I have seen him somewhere before. Long time ago. And I asked him, 
did you went to any game events? Like, I guess certainly he said yes. I think I must have found him there. <laughs> <laughs> and after what, they finally said, hey, wait, wait, you have a friend named Norman? He said, yeah, 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 I got him. I know him, I know him. <laughs> so, yeah, and then like, just like that. Oh, wow. Well. It's a small world. It's a really, really small world. <laughs> you know what the smaller world? Uh, what? Today of the event, uh, get to know new more people and new people. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I mean, some of them even just started today to get to know about the dolls and everything. So I talked to one and then got one girl. She's a very extrovert, playful. I like her. Then suddenly she came to me, just like, hey, you got Facebook? I want your Facebook. <laughs> then as, as Chen, then suddenly said, so we got one mutual friend then. Okay, this mutual friend, before I go further, I said, you know this guy? And he said, you know him? We were laughing. And then I said, yes, I know. He is my classmate at Lincoln Wing. And thanks to him, I got my animation job. Thanks to him, blah, blah, blah. And we do a lot of crazy things in Bali when we go trip to Bali. And finally she said, that's my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> we took selfie and sent to him. And he was like, oh, you know my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That, that, okay, that is a small world. We, oh, wow. We were laughing in the restaurant as we sent the photo and like driving the guy crazy how you met. <laughs> Why got smoke or what the hell? Like, all the things have. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, wow. No wonder you were late. <laughs> yeah, we stuck together. Oh, it's cool, it's cool. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. It, it, I, I, I'm, I'm speechless. Like, you left me speechless. This is the power of friendship. Yeah, this is the oh. magic of friendship. Yes, I know. This is the magic of friendship. <laughs> uh, well, it, it certainly dwarfed my days or week. Uh, well, uh, w- w- let's see what I did with my week. Um, <laughs> I can beat yours. Like, I, if I were to say anything, it would be, it would be dwarfed. Okay, let's see. Uh, this week I did a lot of, well, quote unquote, gamings, um, from the Overwatch to the Paydays. Oh, okay. Um, but other than that, uh, let's see. Uh, nothing new really. I- I'm trying to remember what game I played Wait. that's recent, but I think, uh, well, the only one thing I can remember is the Mega Man Legacy Collection 1 and 2. Nice. So I started playing that one for a bit. And the problem with that one is, well, at least for the first Legacy, I already bought it on the 3DS. So I already played it. <laughs> so I'm playing it. I'm playing through it again. So it's like, uh, okay, uh, maybe later. <laughs> I mean, like, for me, not... I have nothing much to say because it's just for my weekdays. It's just working. I'm working. But night. Okay lah. I, I do two things at night. I One, I'm playing Dragon Age. Inquisition. Inquisition. Cause I just, I'm a, I just, I'm a completionist. So, okay. And later at 12, midnight until 2, I'm listening live Mystery Jam 12, a radio talk show from Singapore. Oh really? No. Oh yeah. Actually, actually, I was listening them since 2013. So when I get to that new company. Oh. So yeah, I missed a bit last night because we were chatting. Oh yeah. Sorry about that. And no problem. I can always uh-huh. listen the the repeat the next day at YouTube, the official YouTube. Oh okay. Uh, so let's see. Uh, besides the whole playing the of the Overwatch and the Paydays and a bit of the Mega Man's, I think I I I bought something. I, I recently bought something online. Um, it's called uh what you might call this uh pop socket huh? so if you guys don't know <laughs> wait is that the my little pony pop socket we used to talk before yes that one so anywho yeah I, I bought something called a pop socket and if you guys don't know what a pop socket is it's one of those things that you stick to the back of your phone and it helps you hold it and prop it up as a phone stand I think it was shown on Unbox Therapy once, so there's a place to go and check it out. So I bought this one locally at a co- at a store called Gamers Hideout. And by the way, I'm not sponsored by them, and also I'm not sponsored by Pop Socket. I wish I was, but no, um, I bought it with my own cash, and I kind of like it. Uh, I put the holder in the car, and it holds really well. And I kind of wanted to buy more or see if there's more selection. Like the one I currently have is an army camo kind of thing. It's cool and whatnot, but I really wanted something more um, minimalistic and more streamlined. So I look online. There's out there, but most of them are either pirated or Mm -hmm. too expensive. And a friend of mine locally... Um, found one that's pirated and he said that it's the worst 
And the only reason why I bought this one is because of how you can put it on and pull it off. So that's the only thing that attract me to it because you can reapply it as many times as you want. So that's awesome. So wanting to find more options, like I do remember that they have the um, aluminium and also some other colors, more psychedelic colors and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go online and to their official store. And I saw that they have, well, more options there until I spotted that they have My Little Pony. But yes. they uh, do not have everyone yet, right? Uh, not 100% sure. With cases like this, it's based on the marketing and the deal agreement that they have. But still, uh, they have Pinkie Pie, Rarity, Rainbow Dash, Pinkie Pie, and Rainbow Dash, Twilight, and Pinkie Pie. Uh, Twilight is wing version of Twilight, I think. Yes, it's yeah, wing version it's the of wing version. So it's there, it's available. I I personally like using this because it props up as a nice stand and it's a really nice car holder. It's only 15 bucks, but... If you go and check in the show notes or in the link below the YouTube thingy, uh, there's a link for a discount code. And I think that you need to click on the link for the reference thing and get a discount code. And you can save up to two bucks off your purchase. So from a $15 item, you'll get to $13 item. So yay, that's something off. I would totally recommend it if you want to try something out. It's just 13 bucks. They say there's free shipping over orders 20 bucks or higher. So that's based on whatever you want to add. Like if you want to get something more, like maybe a Pinkie Pie and a Rainbow Dash or a Rarity and a Rainbow Dash, uh, you can do the combo there and you'll save $2 out of it. So yay, um, I'll put it in the show notes and the link below. So if you do go so, hey, you'll save $2 off. So yay. So other than that, yes, that has been my week. A lot of doing almost nothing. Yeah, and we basically say what we had done so far. What are you planning? Do you have any plan for tomorrow, Sunday? Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Uh, Sunday for me will be reviewing. Uh, tomorrow I'll be recording um, the review. Yes, uh, tomorrow will be review for episode 30. I think yes 13 and a comic that will be the 25 to 26 sorry not 20 uh, 55 and 56 so I'll be doing that tomorrow so yay more yeah. comics to be reviewed yeah and I still cannot stay at home tomorrow I day why what happened wedding ah yes you have to attend a wedding yeah that's fun uh, I will be the only Malay at the wedding oh that'll be fun <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, so anywho, that's been my week. Um, well, you, do you need? Uh, do you have anything more to add? Nah, nothing. All right then. So anywho, if you guys at home have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at themeshogmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show. My Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. And Amy, where can the good people find you? Well, they can find me in Twitter, Ely Carido. And actually, basically, if you just Google Illy Carido, I'm almost everywhere. Alrighty then. I'll be sure to add that in the show notes. And also, please subscribe to Radio on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitch Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on BonifLive.com. Link will be in the show notes. And also, please do subscribe to our latest endeavor, the MBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast, also on iTunes and Stitch Radio. Over there, you'll catch me, Silver Quill, Savoy Heart Song, and also Guest of the Week. Talk about the My Little Pony episodes, comics, movies, and other topics like any cartoon comics or even movies. So be sure to check us out there. And if you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you'll get early access to the Review and Discussion podcast. You also get exclusive content and also you will get uh, access to deleted contents. And also a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I like to thank Lurker Cat and Dragatorius, Starstream, Master of Lag, and also you, Amy. Thank you for supporting me. No problem, you're welcome. And I, I like your show. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I just have to remember that somebody supported the show and I was shocked to know that was you and <laughs> the whole mental state of, okay, I remember these people's name. Now I need to remember one more. Oh gosh, my head. <laughs> Just think, we are supporting you. Don't forget your supporter. <laughs> yes, that's the thing. Election uh, nearby. <laughs> oh God, no. <laughs> uh, but anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. And I'm Amy. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the Show. See ya. Bye.